So if you've ever looked into networking or network attached storage devices or even workstation motherboards and desktop computers, chances are you've ran into a thing called 10G networking, but what on earth is 10G? Well, 10G simply just refers to the speed in which data can transfer through a network. In this case being 10 gigabit per second, otherwise known as, well, 10G. Now, 10G can be really helpful for connecting multiple servers to multiple clients or even just a super fast NAS desktop experience, allowing you to transfer multiple amounts of gigabytes per second without that much problems. Now, 10G is mainly found on the workstation and server side as it allows the user to have much more faster speeds and transferring much more data as that is very important for not only a server but also to a workstation trying to get jobs done as fast as possible. For example, if you are watching this video on just your standard desktop computer with a single ethernet cable plugged in or just some blue wired ethernet cable in there and you connect up to another computer and go ahead and share folders and share files and those kind of things, you've essentially created yourself a single gigabit network. Now these are pretty simple and simple to achieve as well, all you need is cable and basically most hardware out there supports a gigabit network and well, boom, you've set yourself up one. This is really popular for basic NAS drives and even basic servers to go ahead and just get yourself started without dropping a ton of money. Now this kind of network would be just fine for streaming some music, movies or even just transferring your Word documents and those kind of things or even photos at that stage and well, that should do your job just fine. But when it comes to more intense jobs such as rendering multiple thousand bit per second video files in pro applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects and even DaVinci Resolve whilst copying files off of a SSD based camera and going ahead and copying files from your server onto your desktop and then doing a 3D render all at the same time can definitely eat up that bandwidth and that single gigabit link will just not be able to go ahead and provide the amount of bandwidth needed to transfer all that data. On top of that we're only taking advantage of one out of the six gigabit available to all the drives within that computer assuming you're not running any rate. As most desktop drives on the market that are of the mechanical kind will go ahead and run at 6 gigabit per second speed. So 1 gigabit versus 6 gigabit there's definitely a lot of room to go ahead and expand. Now you could think of this as kind of like a pipe and a bucket of water analogy. For example your single gigabit link is kind of like a straw and its job is to go ahead and transfer the water in a big bucket into a smaller bucket and well that little straw is going to take quite a while to do so because of the amount of water in that bucket. If we go ahead and give 10G into this sort of analogy then you'd go ahead and say that that is a nice big PVC pipe with a pump and it goes ahead and just sort of sucks all that water into the second bucket a lot faster getting the job done well not only faster but also to more efficient and this is what's happening with all your data. 10G allows a lot more data to flow through as it can transfer at 10 gigabit per second as opposed to a single gigabit per second so in theory it's about 10x faster. Now there are a few reasons as to why everything isn't on 10G but we'll cover two or three for this particular video that are a few of the main reasons why we're not fully on 10G yet. First off being infrastructure cables, connectors, wires and just basically everything that connects 10G all together. They're expensive and there's a ton of different options and most of them come in two different flavours being fibre optic and direct attached copper. So we'll start off with the actual connectors. They're mostly referred to as SFP plus connectors and well they're your essentially 10G connectors. Now these are a lot bigger and a lot less user friendly than your standard little ethernet jack and overall isn't really going to be the best and even easy to fit into a thin and light notebook as well. They're generally a lot bigger and bulkier than your standard ethernet jack. They come in two different flavours being fibre optic and direct attached copper and we're going to see that pattern of form in just a few seconds there. Then we need to go ahead and get ourselves some wire parts to this whole thing and they come in once again two flavours being direct attached copper and fibre optic. Then we need to talk about these switches which are the bits that connect one computer to another computer or a computer to a server and those kind of things and once again they come in two different flavours being direct attached copper and going ahead and giving us fibre optic. Then once again on the second side we need cables that support either fibre optic or direct attached copper and we need another computer that once again supports direct attached copper or fibre optic. So you kind of get the idea there's a ton of different options for some simple tasks that needs to be done. On top of that, they're much more expensive and not every computer goes ahead and actually supports 10G natively. There's only one or few motherboards out there that have built in 10G for a reasonable price, but the rest of us will be looking at expensive adding cards. Now for the server and workspace environment, a five to $700 adding card for 10G networking isn't really that much money and shouldn't 
really be much of a worry as the workstation is the computer that is most likely doing jobs to earn money and that server is there to go ahead and store all the files for that workstation to go ahead and make all that money. So it's kind of like an investment into your set of tools that you need and it's well kind of the most practical thing you can do. But for the home user spending five to seven hundred dollars is not very practical at all and might just turn out to you being wasting a ton of money. As it's kind of hard to justify spending five to seven hundred dollars on an adding card that allow you to plug in one cable to your computer and that's it. And then you need to buy another one as well as cable switches and all those other things to get it to even work with a server or any other computer in your house. Then on top of that we have infrastructure costs and final internet speeds. Now on top of cables, connectors and switches and all those kind of things we've just mentioned and talk about, you also to have the overall costs of implementing it all. As we mentioned just a single adding card can cost you upwards of $500 not to mention you need those special cables, special connectors and even special switches and sometimes even software to to go ahead and run all this so it might not be the most practical thing and finally on top of that internet speeds are nowhere near reaching 10g so it's not really the most practical thing to go ahead and do at home for example we're not really anywhere around wide adoption at the time of recording of even single gigabit speed internet we have things like google fiber at the moment that's going ahead and rolling out in certain places but overall we're not exactly seeing the most wide adoption of gigabit ethernet especially here in australia anyway so your internet speed will definitely not increase by adding 10G networks. I can tell you this and you can go ahead and look at this speed test running on a single gigabit connection to a X99 UD3 motherboard from Gigabyte and this one that is running the exact same setup and the same motherboard except with a 10G adding card from Intel and a 10G network and you can see there's like not that much difference there with good old Australian slow internet. So overall whilst 10G is a lot faster and great for workstation and servers it can be costly to implement and the connectors themselves are not really the most user friendly and overall isn't going to be hitting the mainstream anytime soon. It's a lot faster than gigabit connections and if you are in that workstation and service space 10G might be a lot better for you as well it allows you to go ahead and transfer all your files and get your job done a lot faster. But on another note guys Curious.com has helped to make this video possible. Go sign up today and get yourself a free one week trial to go ahead and test out the service and see what you like and see what you want to learn. If you like what you seeing and what you're learning you can continue for just $8.99 a month. But for CP Mod viewers you guys get a discount to $7.99 a month otherwise known as a 20% discount. So go ahead and sign up today with the link bit.do slash cpmod and go ahead and save your money there. You guys get a saving and you get to learn some pretty cool stuff also too from me. We're over on curious.com as well and we get a kickback from that purchase. So do remember to use bit.do slash cpmod when purchasing. So guys with that being said like or dislike the video accordingly let me know what you want to see in another quick tips video. I know we haven't done this for quite a while, but overall guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time for another video.